Back in the 90s, everybody's heard about MechWarrior. I don't know a single person that didn't. Not around my group of friends, not around the people I hang with, which was probably mostly nerds. But even now, when I mention MechWarrior, somebody's able to tell me about at least MechWarrior 3, 4, or the online game. MechWarrior is pretty much a big deal. It's real hard to find something that's a uh, combat sim with you inside a gargantuous monster of a mech going up against another. And sometimes the missions can be quite enriching. Though if you didn't have a PC back in the day, you were probably playing it on your Super Nintendo. And that's what we're here to talk about. We're going to talk about the two games that came with the Super NES, MechWarrior and MechWarrior 3050. Each of them were unique to the other MechWarrior games that you would find on the PC. The first one was supposed to be very similar to the MechWarrior uh, PC version, only it used Mode 7 instead of the 3D graphics with no texture. And 3050 was an isolinear uh, shooter. The opening scene is actually pretty nice. I'll let you look for it for yourself. You're on, you get to your main menu, you notice that there's a practice mode. If you're new to the game, I recommend you give that a shot. And I'll also take this opportunity to show you a little code that I know. If you pause your screen on the way down or at any time and press A L L Y three times, your screen will do a quick flash symbolizing that you are invincible. And you can use this at any time. However, there is a limitation. Don't let them aim for your legs and don't step on any mines. You could still die by leg loss. And here it is. Here is MechWarrior for the Super NES. Well, yes, it's not 3D and all the stuff like that. The Mode 7 graphics are played nicely and the combat is very satisfying. You play the role as a guy named Harris, a mercenary who is taking revenge for the death of his family from a, a group called the Darkwing Lance, which he calls a cartel, but it's just a bunch of bad mercenaries, blah blah blah. And that sets your premise. In terms of actual story, it doesn't really give you anything that you can be emotionally attached to. You're just here to blow up mechs. And now we're into the mech bay. Now, I'm going to make this pretty quick. I'm going to go over here and buy a mech. Normally, you can't do this. You're going to be stuck with your light mech for a while. You have a choice between lights, medium, heavy. Four variants of lights, two variants of mediums, so a heavy, and then, of course, you've got the assault class. Unlike uh, the other mech warriors, your, criti your criticals and all that stuff or that are not determined by your mech type. Basically, what we're going to do here is quickly customize up. See, I don't like things with uh, uh, ammunition, so I kind of get rid of that. I like laser boats. Sell off my old mech. And then I'm just going to do some armor customizations. And pref preferably, I like more airspeed than walk speed because I like that burst of speed. So let's go ahead and just skip through this. All right, now that I'm done with that, go out to the main menu and we're going to head over to the diner or the cafe whatever you want to call it all right here we go you're f basically how you get your missions is that you go to this little bar diner thing and uh, you get planets named out to you like uh, Gallatin which is going to be our first stop and it's told to you by Cyril or whatever you pronounce his name you leave there once you learned your planet go to the GHQ now, sometimes you're lucky and it's automatically selected, but you can find it through a list. And you can also even negotiate the price. Which, most of the time, Davion's a dick. After a mission is selected, you get another option, and you select your mech, and it's time to go. Now, I have zero armor on, so I definitely ain't going to need that code. There we go. And this is basically your bare bones basic uh, type of mech fight right here. Basically, your objective is to kill everything that moves, and it won't take very long. At the beginning of the game, it'll start you very slow. You'll be fighting just a couple of lights, and it'll slowly increase its difficulty the more missions you do. 
And of course you get a job well done screen after every victorious mission. Now another mode of uh, play you're going to get is uh, offensive campaign, which is basically a base defense, one of the two types of base defense. And Avion's a dick again, but that's okay. I get a bigger mech anyways. Let's go rock it out on assault. This is total overkill. Basically, there's going to be a place designated as your base. If you did the practice, you should already know how this rolls. And you just... Uh, the best strategy I find is to go and stay nearby your base, which is indicated with a B on your screen, on your little radar screen. Grapes out of tank, I tell you. Basically, all of the bosses are the same, so I'm just going to show you the last one. Your Ganter, Ganter, bitch. They all fight the same. They're all diseases each other, even when you're not invincible. And they always start with the same thing. They always throw three to four light mechs at you first, hoping to soften you up or make it easy to open like a jar of pickles. But if you're well equipped, they're not going to be anything to you. Okay. Oh, there he is. And just blast him away. The boss. Now they are different colors. I guess it's supposed to represent the amount of uh, armor they have, but you can always have more armor than they do. I mean, coming after you with just machine guns isn't really going to do much. And they all come after you like that. Jump over them. They're smart enough to aim low. But most times, they're easily taken care of by just weaving with them while walking backwards. And basically you just spread out all the damage around your arms if you have any. If not, then I uh, hope that your thing has got a lot of armor on. Which I don't have to worry about because I'm not so. This was just a quick, brief way of showing you how it goes. Gameplay is very repetitive, and once you know how to do it once, you'll know how to do it all the time. And there's most things, there's even a game mode that uh, goes by sheer luck instead of sheer skill. Basically, you have to find an item. It's in one of the mechs. You have to kill the right mech, but if you don't kill it fast, and you're like, if it's the last one, then you don't get it at all. But that's Mech Warrior in a nutshell. MechWarrior was a fantastic sim game. MechWarrior 3050, however, was a different story. As it was an isolinear shooter, you didn't feel as connected as the rest of it. And what's worse is that the game is totally horrible. At least it is to me. Most importantly, be glad that this game has a password feature. Because there's no way you can play this in one sitting. You'll tear your eyeballs out. That being said, I have a little bit of a password to show you. The ammo in this game sucks, so if you want to put in the password M1R0G3, that gives you infinity ammo. It ain't no invincibility, but uh, the infinity ammo helps. Ah, oh, listen to that song. I don't want to hear it. Here's your weapons, your customizable weapons. Machine gun, laser. To take my advice and put on the weapons that I'm doing. Machine gun, cannon, machine gun, Which laser. is going to be Aerial 6, Nickel, Laser, thunder, and uh, Inferno. either Inferno Missile or uh, Thunder Mine, depending on what you want to do. Here you are. Love the mood, right? No music, just kind of running around, checks, your mission just 
scrolling at the bottom where you can't quite see it. Ah, elements will kick my ass. You're not, uh, graded by your, uh, armor or your, uh, or anything at that point. Basically, your mech overheats over time, and then it just pops its top off. And if you think that this game is uh, bad enough as it is, try playing a two-player. If you want to lose a friend, play this game two-player. First player controls the torso, the second player controls the legs. If one player knows where they're going and the other one doesn't, it's going to be a tough time, and you're going to find yourself frustrated with your friend, and I've actually had some of my friends, like, punch me over this game. Because it's just, it's it's crappy. Now, they give you small anonymities, like uh, a radar to see where your objectives are, but there's just no appeal to it, really. It's just not, uh, there's no strategy involved. All I do is run around firing arrow sixes around me making sure that I have the ammunition for it. Getting chased around by mechs that don't have any uh, other purpose but just to annoy the shit out of you. The mission objectives are lame. The, uh, the graphics just are not what they should be. And the music, when there is music, is just subpar. And this, you know, we write music for fun. I don't think I'll ever write a song out of this because I'm. It's just. It's just bad. Considering that it doesn't even have music to begin with, except for you know, three things and an ending. And that's it. I mean, for a. Uh, vastly. Uh, a vast story like this, you would think that uh, 3050 would have given you something a little bit more substantial. I'm not gonna lie, that's as far as I can take. I went up to level 3 on that, which when they disable your radar. I, I can't play that game in one sitting, and there's no way I want to go back to it. I used to play it a lot when I when I had just a Super Nintendo, had nothing better to do, but now I know better. So if you want to play a game on the Super Nintendo that is mechanized combat like MechWarrior, play the original MechWarrior. It might be repetitive, but it's satisfying and darn good.